Hello everyone. In this session, I will demonstrate you the general features and attachments of fibula. This is the fibula which is a very slender bone. It is situated in the leg. There are two bones in the leg. The medial bone is tibia and the lateral bone is fibula. The fibula is homologous with ulna in the upper limb. It is a typical long bone so it has two ends upper end is the upper end lower end and shaft now the upper and lower end look very similar to each other so how to differentiate the two ends and how to determine the side of fibula the upper end is also known as the head the upper end is known as the head it is slightly expanded in all the directions so if we see here the head is expanded in all the direction the superior surface of the head has a circular articular facet this facet will articulate with the lateral condyle of tibia this is the lateral condyle of tibia and the two together form the superior tibiofibular joint From the posterior lateral aspect of the head, there is a projection which is known as the apex or styloid process. So this is the apex or styloid process which is projecting from the posterior lateral aspect of the head. So that is the apex or styloid process of the head. So the upper end, upper end which is slightly expanded in all directions has an apex or styloid process from the posterior lateral aspect. And there is a circular articular facet on superior surface. In the lower end, the lower end is flattened from side to side and it is expanded from antero posterior direction. This is antero posterior direction which is expanded, but it is flattened from side to side. The lower end is also known as lateral malleolus. There are four surfaces in the lower end, out of which the most important for side determination is the medial surface. If we see the medial surface of the lateral malleolus, we can see two characteristic features here. Anteriorly, there is a triangular articular facet for talus bone. So this is known as talar articular facet. So that should be anteriorly and behind it there is a deep fossa. This fossa is known as malleolar fossa. So on the medial surface of the lower end there should be smooth facet anteriorly and fossa posteriorly. So by this we can know this is the lower end, this is the upper end and this is the shaft. So keep the bone in such a way that the facet and the fossa are facing medially in the lower end in such a way that fossa is behind and facet is anterior. So this is the left fibula in which the facet is facing anteriorly and medially and fossa is just behind it which is behind the facet facing medially. So this is the left fibula. So you keep your left thumb in the malleolar fossa and this is how you hold it in anatomical position. So if it is left fibula, you keep your left thumb into the malleolar fossa which is behind the triangular articular facet. If it is right fibula, like here this fibula, it has an upper end or head which is expanded in all direction with styloid process or apex. Whereas the lower end that is the lateral malleolus and the medial surface of it has a triangular articular facet which should be anterior and the deep malleolar fossa should be behind it. So this is the right fibula and you keep your right thumb in the malleolar fossa 
and this is how you hold it in anatomical position. So this is the right fibula and this is the left fibula. Now coming to the features of the shaft, the shaft has three borders and three surfaces. The three borders, you can only identify the borders and surfaces once you keep it in anatomical position. The borders are one anterior border. This is the anterior border. Just medial to it is the medial border or interosseous border. And there is a rounded posterior border. So there are three borders, anterior border, medial border and posterior border. The anterior border, it above, it begins just below the anterior aspect of head. It runs down and in the lower part, it encloses a triangular area. This is the triangular area which has anterior margin and posterior margin. And this triangular area is continuous below with the lateral surface of the lateral malleolus. So this is the anterior border. This is the anterior border. And here in the lower part it encloses a triangular area which is continuous below with the lateral surface of lateral malleolus. Just medial to it is the medial border or interosseous border. In the upper part, the anterior border and medial border are very close to each other as we can see here. So this is the medial or interosseous border here. And then there is a posterior border which is rounded border. Above, the posterior border is in line with the styloid process of the head and here below, this is the posterior border. So there are three borders, anterior, medial and posterior borders. Now there are three surfaces between anterior border and interosseous border. This is the medial surface. The medial surface is very narrow in the upper part because the anterior and the medial border are very close to each other. So this is the medial surface. Then there is a lateral surface. This is the lateral surface between anterior border and posterior border. So this is the posterior, sorry, this is the lateral surface which is twisted backward in the lower part. So this is the lateral surface and the largest of the three surfaces is the posterior surface. The posterior surface is situated between the interosseous border and the posterior border. Again in the upper part, this posterior surface is divided into two parts by a vertical ridge. This is a vertical ridge. And this is known as medial crest. This is known as medial crest. So the posterior surface, which is between interosseous border and posterior border, further divided into two parts, one between medial crest and interosseous border, which is grooved part. And the other part is between medial crest and posterior border. So these are the features of the shaft. Coming to the lower end, as I said, the lower end is known as lateral malleolus. On the medial surface, there is a triangular telar articular surface anteriorly and a deep malleolar fossa posteriorly. The lateral surface of lateral malleolus is subcutaneous. This is the lateral surface. The anterior surface is rough and rounded. Whereas the posterior surface of the lateral malleolus has a groove, this groove is occupied by the tendon of peroneus brevis which is deep and peroneus longus which is superficial. 
So this is the groove on the posterior surface of the lateral malleolus. So these are the general features of fibula. Now coming to the attachments. The main attachments on fibula we will understand by drawing the schematic diagrams of medial surface, lateral surface and posterior surface. Now coming to the attachments on the medial surface of the shaft. The medial surface of the shaft is divided into three parts, upper one-fourth, middle two-fourth and lower one-fourth. Again, these are again divided into anterior half and posterior half. So this is anterior, this is posterior. From the whole of the upper one-fourth and anterior half of middle two-fourth, from here arises extensor digitorum longus. Extensor digitorum longus. From the posterior half of the middle two-fourth arises extensor hallucis longus. So this is extensor hallucis longus. Whereas the lower one-fourth of the medial surface of shaft gives origin to peroneus tertius. So this is peroneus tertius. So we can see three muscles arising from the medial surface of the shaft namely extensor digitorum longus, extensor hallucis longus and peroneus tertius. Coming to the attachment on lateral surface of the shaft we divide the lateral surface into three parts, upper one-third, middle one-third and lower one-third. Again, we divide these into anterior and posterior halves. From the whole of the upper one-third and posterior half of the middle one-third of the lateral surface of the shaft, so this area gives origin to peroneus longus muscle. So this is peroneus longus, whereas anterior half of the middle one-third and the lower one-third of the lateral surface of the shaft gives origin to peroneus brevis muscle. So this is peroneus brevis. So two muscles arising from lateral surface of the shaft, peroneus longus and peroneus brevis. Coming to attachment on the posterior surface of the shaft, we have seen there is a medial crest which divides the posterior surface into two parts. So these are the two parts. The part between medial crest and interosseous border. So this grooved part gives origin to tibialis posterior muscle. Whereas the other part between medial crest and posterior border. So this part can again be divided into upper one-fourth and lower three-fourth. So the upper one-fourth of this part gives origin to soleus muscle whereas the lower three-fourth of this part gives origin to flexor hallucis longus muscle. So the muscles which arise from posterior surface are tibialis posterior, soleus and flexor hallucis longus. Now coming to the attachment on the head, the apex and its slope on the anterolateral aspect on the head receives insertion of biceps femoris muscle. This insertion is C-shaped insertion. Within the C there is attachment of fibular collateral ligament of knee joint. The margin of the articular surface on the superior surface of the head gives attachment to capsular ligament of the superior tibiofibular joint. Below the head there is a constricted part. This is the neck of fibula. So above is the head, below is the neck. A very important nerve is related on the posterolateral aspect of the neck. This nerve is common peroneal nerve. 
So the common peroneal nerve winds around the posterior lateral aspect of neck of fibula and divides into deep peroneal nerve and superficial peroneal nerves. The anterior border, this is the anterior border of the shaft, gives attachment to anterior intermuscular septum of the leg. And in the lower part, we have seen that the anterior border encloses a triangular area which has two margin, anterior margin and posterior margin. So the lower part of anterior margin gives attachment to superior extensor retinaculum and the lower part of the posterior margin gives attachment to superior peroneal retinaculum. The posterior border of the shaft gives attachment to posterior intermuscular septum of the leg. The interosseous border, which is the medial border, gives attachment to interosseous membrane. Interosseous means between the tibia and fibula. Interosseous membrane binds the shaft of tibia and fibula together. In the upper part, there is a gap in interosseous membrane for the passage of anterior tibial vessels. Now just above the medial surface of lateral malleolus, this rough area gives attachment to three ligaments. In the middle there is interosseous tibiofibular ligament, anteriorly anterior tibiofibular ligament and posteriorly is the posterior tibiofibular ligament. Now coming to the attachment of lateral malleolus, the anterior surface and the posterior surface of the lateral malleolus gives attachment to anterior talofibular ligament whereas this malleolar fossa gives attachment to inferior transverse tibiofibular ligament in upper part and posterior talofibular ligament in the lower part. The lower border of the lateral malleolus gives attachment to calcaneofibular ligament. And as we have seen earlier, the groove on the posterior surface of the lateral malleolus is occupied by the tendon of peroneus brevis which is deep and peroneus longus which is superficial. Lastly, coming to the ossification of the fibula which is very important. There is one primary center for the shaft which appears at about 8, 6 to 8 weeks of intrauterine life. And there are two secondary centers, one for the lower end and one for the upper end. The secondary center for the lower end appears around one year and fuses with the shaft at about 16 years. The secondary center for the upper end appears later, that is at about four years and fuses with the shaft at about 18 years. According to law of ossification, the secondary center which appears first will fuse last with the shaft and the secondary center which appears later fuses first with the shaft. The secondary center which fuses last with the shaft is the growing end of the bone. So this bone, fibula, is a unique bone because fibula violates the law of ossification. The secondary center for the upper end it appears later, that is at about 4 years, but fuses with the shaft also last, that is at about 18 years, because the upper end of the fibula is the growing end of the bone, whereas the lower end of the fibula, the secondary center for the lower end, it appears first at about 1 year and it also fuses first at about 16 years, because it is a pressure epiphysis. So fibula violates the law of ossification because the secondary center which appear first does not fuse last. The secondary center for the upper end appear later and fuses last. So this completes our general features and attachments of fibula. Thank you.